Hey algebra students, how you doing? Today we're going to be talking about exponents. So exponents, what do they mean? Well generally when I think about an exponent I think if I have for example 5 to the third power that means 5 times 5 times 5, all right? 5 times 5 times 5. 5 multiplied by itself three times. Okay, if I have x to the sixth power it's x times x times x times x times x times x. All right, cool. Good enough. That's, that's, a, it's, it's, that's easy enough to understand. So now let's see if we can come up with some rules about exponents. And we can. Okay, and then uh, those rules, let's see if they tell us some things about exponents we hadn't really thought of before. Okay, well, let's start with the first one. First one says x to the a power times x to the b power equals x to the a plus b power. What does that mean? Well, it means that if I'm multiplying two numbers that have the same base, okay, that x is the same number, and they have, they both have exponents, then my answer is going to be that same base to the sum of the exponents. Let me give you an example. Let's look at, uh, let's say we have um, x to the third times x to the fourth, okay? Now x to the third, we know what that means, right? It means x times x times x. And x to the fourth, we know what that means. It means x times x times x times x. Okay? So here is x to the third power. Here's x to the fourth power. And if I multiply them, then all I have is this multiplication of a string of x's and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have seven of them. And so it's pretty easy to see that x to the third times x to the fourth power equals x to the seventh. Now, according to this rule here, we could have done that a lot faster just by saying 3 plus 4 equals 7. And as it turns out, we can do that. There's nothing magical about 3 and 4 and 7. I could have done this with, well, with any whole number exponents here. So, okay. So x to the a power times x to the b power is x to the uh, a plus b power. What if you had x to the a divided by x to the b? Well, then you would get x to the a minus b power, right? Well, this is actually just sort of an extension of the first one because what we can think of here is, well, if x to the third times x to the fourth is x to the seventh, then what would uh, x to the seventh divided by x to the fourth power be? Well, if x to the third times x to the fourth is x to the seventh, then x to the seventh divided by x to the fourth would just be x to the third, right? Because division is the inverse operation to multiplication. And therefore, we could just say 7 minus 4 is 3 because subtraction is the inverse operation to uh, uh, addition. So this makes perfect sense right here. Another way of thinking about this is to take, uh, let's take uh, x to the, oh, I don't know, x to the fifth power divided by x to the second power. Okay, now what is x to the fifth power? It's x times x times x times x times x. What is x to the second power? It's x times x. Now, what can I do with this fraction? I can reduce the fraction. I can simplify it. I can say, hey, these two x's and these two x's, one, this one over this one is just one, so I can cancel it out. And I'm left with x times x times x, which is x to the third power. And again, you see 5 minus 2 equals 3. So yeah, it seems that this rule does actually hold. Now what's interesting though, is if you say, well, what if, I, uh, what if I exchange the places here of x to the fifth and x squared? What if I say I'm going to have x squared divided by x to the fifth power? Well, by this rule here, that means I would have x to the two minus five, which is negative 3. Can I have a negative exponent? Well, if you've looked at number 3, you're going to say, yeah, apparently you can. And yeah, we can. Now, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to broaden our, our, our idea of what an exponent is here because we can no longer think it's that number that if you multiply a number times itself that many times, you get the answer. No, because I can't multiply x times itself negative 3 times. That that just doesn't make any kind of sense. So I have to stop thinking that that's, that's exactly what exponents mean, and I have to think 
Exponents mean that, but they also mean a bit more, okay? And so in this case, we're going to have to sort of, uh, like I said, expand our, uh, our definition of what an exponent is. So what is a negative exponent, though? Well, again, let's do the same thing that we did in our last uh, example, and let's say um, x squared over x to the fifth. I'm just going to write out my x's. I'm going to say this is x times x divided by x times x times x times x times x. All right, well, again, I can, uh, I can simplify this fraction. I can say these two over these two, that's just one. So that means I have one over x times x times x, which is one over x cubed. Uh-huh. So what does that mean? It means x to the negative three is one over x to the three. And I could have done this with any different combination of whole numbers. And so what you can see by generalizing just a little bit is that x to any negative exponent is just going to be the reciprocal of x to that positive exponent. And that's why we have this rule here that says x to the negative a is 1 over x to the a. By the way, we can actually uh, uh, we can extend this a little bit and say it's also 1 over x to the a power. Okay, So you can either say it's the reciprocal of x to the a, or you can say it's the reciprocal to x to the a power. It doesn't matter what order you do that in. Okay? Well, okay, so we understand x to the positive integer powers and x to the negative integer powers. What about that number in between the positive integers and the negative integers, x to the 0? As you see here, it says x to the 0 is 1. Well, why would that be? Well, it's quite simple. Let's just do another, uh, another division problem. Let's say we have x to the 5 over x to the 5, okay? Well, x to the 5 over x to the 5, that's just, that's just 1, right? Okay? Anything divided by itself is just 1. But according to our uh, subtraction rule, or our, our rule number 2, our division rule, this is x to the 5 minus 5, which is x to the 0. And what does that tell us? It tells us that x to the 0 is 1. And this is true for any x at all, with one exception as long as x doesn't equal 0. And uh, there's a pretty good explanation for this, and it's very short, and that is, look at the way that I described this. Look at the way that I explained this. I said x to the fifth over x to the fifth. If x is 0, I'm taking 0 over 0. Uh, 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 you can't divide anything by 0. You can't even divide 0 by 0. So immediately, as soon as I do that, no, I'm, I'm using faulty logic there. So as long as x doesn't equal 0, then x, then x to the 0 power is 1. X, and if you're wondering, well, what is 0 to the 0? It's indeterminate. It's, uh, it, it's a, an answer that cannot be determined. Okay? Now, what about x to the 1 power? Well, not so difficult. Uh, again, let's use our rule number 2, and let's say, what would x to the 6 over x to the 5th be? Well, 6 minus 5, that's obviously x to the 1 power. But x to the 5th divided, divided by x to the 6th, that's just going to be x times x times x times x times x times x, x, you know, x multiplied by itself 6 times. So x to the 5th times x divided by x to the 5th. And as you can see, well, we'll just uh, simplify that fraction and it just turns out to be x. So x to the 0 is 1. x to the 1 is just itself. And this one down here, this is true for all numbers, including zero, okay? Let's move to rule number five. Rule number five says x to the a to the b is going to be x to the a times b power, okay? Now, why is that true? Well, let's say I had x to the third power to the second power, okay? Uh, what does to the second power mean? It means times itself. That means I have x cubed times x cubed. What's x cubed times x cubed? Well, I know from rule number one that that just equals x to the sixth power. Look what I did. I just multiplied three times two equals six. You can do this with any combination of, uh, of uh, uh, positive integers, and it's always going to turn out that this number times this number equals this number. Okay? Uh, so there's uh, that rule. Now we move into, so now we have 
what we've done is now we've identified the rule for any integer value of your exponent, okay? We know how to deal with positive exponents, we know how to deal with negative exponents, we know how to deal with zero exponents, but we haven't looked at rational exponents yet. Rational exponents are kind of weird. So let's look at the first one. Let's look at uh, x to the one-half power, okay? If I take x to the one-half power and I multiply it by x to the one-half power, what do I get? Well, according to my first rule, I'm going to add those exponents, right? One-half plus one-half is one. So that's x to the one, right? Which is just x, okay? So x to the one-half times x to the one-half is x. That means that x to the one-half squared is x. x to the one-half squared is x. That makes sense by rule 5. Rule 5 says that if I have x to a power to another power, x to a power to another power, I would just multiply those powers. 1 half times 2 equals 1, so x to the 1 half squared is x. Well, what does that mean? Well, any number squared, if I, if I take a number and I square it and that equals x, that means this number inside here must be the square root. Yeah, okay, that makes sense because if I took the square root of x times the square root of x, that would also equal x. Well, that really, that really looks like x to the 1 half power must be the square root of x. And it's not just square roots, it's any kind of roots. If I take, uh, if I take, let's say I have x to the 1 third power times x to the 1 third power times x to the 1 third power, what's that going to equal? Well, 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third is 1, so that's going to equal x. And what does that mean? It means that x to the 1 third power is merely the cube root of x, the third root of x. The number that cube root simply means the number that when you multiply it by itself three times, that equals x. Okay, so now I see what x to the 1 over integer power is. It's just going to be that root. Okay, so, uh, so actually I could, uh, I could generalize this one here and I could say not only does x to the 1 half equal the square root of x, x to the 1 over n is the nth root of x. That's also true, okay? That x to the 1 over n power is going to be the nth root of x, okay? Well now, what if I have, last rule, what if I have x to the a over b power, okay? x to the a over b, like Let's say, here, let's change this and say it's x to the two-thirds power, okay? What would that be? Well, that's going to be x to the, let me break up two-thirds and let me say that's going to be x to the two times one-third. If you think about it for a second, two times one-third is two-thirds. Well, multiplying exponents, I can just take rule five and go backwards and say, this is like saying x squared to the one-third power. x squared to the one-third power, uh, I can now uh, look at this and say to the one-third power means the cube root. So this is the cubed root of x squared, and that's exactly right. So x to the two-thirds power is the cube root of x squared. Um, I also want to point out that I could have done my... Uh, my uh, uh, exponents in a different order here. Okay, when I said two-thirds, I said it's two times one-third. Well, I could have just as easily said this is one-third times two. So one-third times two, and that would mean it's x to the one-third power squared. And what does that mean? It means I'm going to take the cube root of x, and then I'm going to square it. So the only difference between this and this is where that exponent is. And so it's, it's just a matter of order of operations. And what, what we see here is that the order of operations in this case doesn't matter. You can either take the root first and, sorry, you can either take the exponent first and then take the root, or you can take the root first and then take the exponent. Okay, last thing I want to show you is uh, an example of, uh, of number seven, okay? 
And that example would be, uh, let's say I want to do uh, 32 to the 0.6 power, okay? 32 to the 0.6 power. Well, first thing I ought to do is I ought to express this rational number as a fraction. And if it's a rational number, you can express it as a fraction. That's what rational number means. So that means this is going to be 32 to the 0.6. That's just 6 over 10, which I can reduce to be 3 over 5. Okay, 32 to the 3 fifths power. Okay, so according to this rule here, that means this could be written as 32 to the third. And whoops, 32 to the third to the, well, yeah, I'll go ahead and write it, to the 1 fifth power which means it's the fifth root to 32 to the third. Uh, and I could do it that way. Um, now, frankly, I don't know what 32 to the third is. Uh, I know that 32 squared is 1,024, but I just don't have in my head what 32 to the third power is. And even if I got that, that would be a big old number, you know, in the, you know, 30-something 30, 30 thousand. Uh, and... Uh, Taking the fifth root of that, that might be a little difficult. So let me go the other way, and let me say this is uh, the fifth root of 32 to the third power. That's a little easier, because I happen to know the fifth root of 32. Think about it for a second. What number multiplied by itself five times is 32? It's two. Why? Because 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. That's 2 multiplied by itself 5 times. So the fifth root of 32 is just 2. And so that means I have 2 to the third. And like I said, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, and that equals 8. There you go. So 32 to the 0.6 power is 8. Take a calculator, do it. Bet you it turns out to be eight. If it doesn't, there's something wrong with your calculator, all right? Okay, those are the seven really essential rules of exponents that you need to know. And uh, that's all. See you later.